What is up, y'all? It is Jerry, once again from Team Unco Studios, back with another MPC Beats very basic tutorial using the MPC Beats software. Okay, so jumping right into it, um, if we pop down to the screen here, you will notice that we have got this little kind of, you know, update window that pops up when we start opening our MPC Beats 2 now, okay? So I kind of figured I'd go over this a little bit in this uh, video first, okay? Obviously the video is about exploding tracks and we're gonna get to that, but we're gonna kind of go over this a little bit. Now, when you open MPC Beats 2, this kind of little window pops up about uh, updating your software, right? Now, some people wanna keep their software updated every time there's an update that comes out and you are more than free to be able to do that. For us here at Team Unco Studios, I like to usually stay behind a couple of updates just to make sure that the updates that they're coming out with, they've got, you know, working properly and everything. Now, if you notice at the top here, the latest update that they have for MPC Beats is 2.14, okay? So under that, it's just kind of telling you the software version 2.14 is now available to download. You are running version 2.12. So on my laptop here, I am running 2.12 and not 2.14, okay? Now, what comes with 2.14? What does that update come with? So if you keep going down here, it says the release notes show you that it's got this introduction of stem separation capability. Now, if you follow MPC Beats and kind of the MPC Beat world, you will know stem separation is their big kind of thing that they dropped at the beginning of this year. And it allows you to just take a sample um, and you can separate all of the different parts out of it. So let's say, for instance, like uh, Michael Jackson's Beat It, you can you know, take a sample of the song and then, you know, let's say you just want the bass line, you can go ahead and separate each of those individually and take that bass line and then do what you want with it, right? So that's the, the capability that it gives you. For us, I don't really need that right now for what I use, but it's always something that's nice to have and know that it's an option that I can upgrade to if I need it in the future. For right now, eh, we don't really have a, a need for it. So I'm going to keep my software at 212 until I need it. Or one day I might just be upgrading stuff and I will upgrade the software. Okay. So that's kind of the little breakdown of this. You can choose to download the update. You can just kind of ignore this whole thing. And I don't think it asks you until another update comes out, or uh, you could just tell it to keep reminding you and you can update it whenever you want. I like to hit the remind me later and, you know, get that reminder, you know, just in case I know I have that option, okay? So let's go ahead and get out of here. Let's go ahead and open up our main window. And as I usually start, we have an empty template here, okay? So the first thing we're gonna need is, we're gonna kinda need something in here so that we can kinda play around with and, and start showing you guys how to explode tracks, okay? So what is exploding tracks? What exploding a track is, and I'm gonna explain it with drums because it's easy, easiest to explain with drums. So if I have on my one of my tracks here, so if, let's say uh, on this track here, I have um, my drum kit, right? And just on this single track, I've got, you know, five different MIDI kind of like information lines. So I've got like a snare, a kick, a uh, hi-hat, you know, and whatever else goes with drums, right? Well, they're all gonna show up here just on this single track. But if I want to be able to have them on individual tracks, meaning I've got one snare on track eight, uh, you know, my hi-hat on track seven, and you know, and on and on, right? You can separate those outside of the MIDI line here, you know, with that, that you have created in that drum kit, right? I know it sounds confusing, but we're gonna walk through it, all right? So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and go back home here, and we are gonna go and let's import something, okay? So how do I go to where the songs are that I've recently worked on, I'm recently currently working on, right? So if you go up to the top left of your screen, you'll notice our little file browser has these three little lines here. If we go ahead and click on it, this little window will pop down here. And you know, with this little window too, guys, the first and the second, kind of little icons there, the file and the edit, are really the only two you're gonna use in these this window, you know, in this file browser window. Everything else is kind of advanced stuff, you know, and like intermediate to advanced. So just know if I say file browser, we're probably going to either file or edit, you know, just for the purpose of these videos. So, but for now, what we're gonna do is go to file, 
we're going to go ahead and go down this and we're going to go to load recents and now if you notice it opens this little window of what i have saved here on my mpc beats folder okay so in my mpc beats file here in my finder you know this is what i've got saved these are the songs that i have in my mpc beats program right now okay so let's just go ahead and go up to uh what's this frequently all right and let's go ahead and we've got now some info here okay so let's see what we've got let's just play this here okay so it looks like just okay so it looks like just a little two bar and i'm just playing the audio right out of the speakers you guys so sorry for the terrible audio the audio is not what the purpose of this is it's it's this uh you know how to explode here so so let's go ahead and uh solo the first track so if you notice where my cursor is here if i just hit this little s it's just going to play that first track okay Okay, so that's kind of some little pluck thing I've got going on there. So let's solo the second track. Okay, so here's my drum kit right here. So let's go ahead and highlight track two, take it out of, uh, we could keep it in solo actually. And let's go ahead and go to the little home icon on our top left toolbar, okay? And now we can see what we've got here. So it looks like I've got a kick here. Let's scroll, maybe there's my drum kit, okay? So it looks like I've got a kick. It looks like I got some hi-hat here. It looks like I got a tambourine, maybe a snare. Okay, so I've got a, a couple of things going on in this drum kit. Now, if I go again to my track view, how do I get these on separate tracks where I can separate them? That's what exploding tracks is, okay? Now, why would I do that? Now, one of the reasons why would be so that when we export out, which I constantly do on drum stuff, sometimes I will just build just a drum track on here. I won't even put samples or anything on it. I will just build drums because I like building my drums on here and then drag that over to the DAW that I use, uh, Studio One, to be able to mix and master and do or add to it from there. So that's one reason you can, ex like, you know, one good reason why you want to explode is so that you have everything on separate tracks when you bring it over in WAV files, you know, to your, to your DAW, to whatever DAW you mix on, right? So, Exploding. If I go ahead and you notice I've got this little guy highlighted here, right? This little track two here. Super important. It needs to be highlighted. Okay. So I know I've got it highlighted and now I want it to separate these, you know, explode these into individual tracks. Okay. So I'm going to go to my file browser. Okay. That little three lines. I'm going to go to my edit. I'm going to go down that new menu that it opened to track. And then about the fourth one down there, you'll see it says explode. Okay, so I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of there. Okay, file browser, go to edit, go down the edit menu to track, and then go to explode. Now, when I hit explode, you're gonna notice stuff is gonna happen, all right? Don't panic, it's all good. We know that it's supposed to happen like this, okay? So let's go ahead and hit explode. Okay, now we've got all of these new tracks that have just opened up here, okay? So a couple of things happened. If you notice on three and four here, I didn't have anything on these two tracks to begin with. It looks like I was working on like some kind of bass or something to put to this little sample I have here. Um, but after that, five, six, seven, and eight now all have stuff on it. And the original track that I exploded is now muted, okay? So those are the things that happen when I exploded right now. Okay, it skipped these two tracks right here that I already had existing, and then it opened up now like four or five more tracks, okay? But it muted my original, all right? So if I go over now to my track mute, okay, which is all the way on your top toolbar there to the left, if you notice to the far right of that on that toolbar, there is that track mute. You'll notice here now I've got all these new options that have opened up, okay? With the exception of the one that's red because that's the original uh, drum kit, all right? Now, if you wanna know more about track mutes and stuff like that, I can leave a video at the end so it'll, you know, show you guys. I think I go over that in a couple of other videos, how that works and all of that, okay? So, but if you already know about this, you'll know now when I play and I start muting some of these out, okay? You'll notice. Okay, now I've only got the hi-hat there, right? So maybe we'll bring the kick in here, right? And then now maybe we can bring some tambourine, right? So you can, you have this option now as opposed to just being able to just have the kit come in and out, right? So I know my kit is here. So, so instead of just having the option to just make it completely silent and then bring the kit back in, I can now actually start individually bringing these guys back in, right? So I can take the kick out, you know, take the hi-hat out, 
you know, take different things out, add different things in. Now make sure that when you are doing this, that second track is muted because if it's not muted, then you're going to have the full kit in as you're bringing things in and out. Okay. So now you'll notice it's not there and we can start bringing things in and out. Okay. So that's basically the way that exploding tracks works. Okay. It allows you this capability to be able to add more texture to your, to your beats and to your, to your song creation. Okay. It's just another tool that we can use. Now, some of the downsides with this, let's say I didn't want to explode tracks. Okay. So how do I undo it? Well, if you follow my tutorials, you know, uh, that to undo something is commands are Z, right? So command Z, command Z, and you'll notice the exploded tracks disappeared, but these tracks stayed here. For some crazy reason, MPC Beats doesn't have a way of getting rid of these tracks, even if you open them just, you know, you open them just by yourself, like if you open just new tracks here, right? You cannot delete the tracks. I don't know if MPC Beats has fixed this or whatever, but in my other DAW, I can open and delete tracks off of my, you know, timeline, you know, there or my project at will. For whatever reason here, I have not found an option that allows me to do that. If you know about one, please leave a comment down below. I would love to know how to do that. But one way you can do it is I always save my original project at what it is. So right now we've been working on this, right? So if I go to close my project right now, this little thing is going to pop up that says, okay, you're going to quit. Would you like to save what you've done? Do you want to not save it? What do you want to do? I always like to keep the integrity of whatever the first thing I was working on. So if you'll notice right now, this little song was just those two bars, right? It's just these two bars of this sample that I have. I like to keep that. I don't like to get rid of that. I can work this for however long I want and not save it. And then when I go to get out of here, you know, cause I can export it and do whatever I want and have another piece of it somewhere else, or I can just save it individually on another DAW or in another file, but I don't save what I've done. What I like to do is just be able to hit don't save. Okay. So it's going to go ahead now and close that down. I'm going to go ahead and reopen MPC Beats again. Okay, I'm going to reopen the DAW again, uh, my MPC Beats too. Obviously, there's our reminder, right, about whether we want to upgrade or not. Remind me later. Now, if I go ahead and go to my file browser and I bring open my latest one frequently, okay, there it is. And now it's back to the original form it is without all of those tracks there. Okay. So that's a little workaround if you want to know how to kind of get back to that, if it makes your workflow any easier. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll probably make a part two to exploding tracks, start showing you guys how to export stuff out and get stuff out when it's exploded. Cause there is kind of another step when you're exporting stuff and we'll go over a couple of other little functions, some things that you might see that pop up just like the, uh, the, um, upgrade uh, available thing and all of that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Peace and love from all of us at Team Unco Studios, and we will catch you guys on the next video. Okay. Bye.